Hey everyone, in today's video I'll be going over the best lightning build you can use, and this setup is devastating from a distance and unstoppable at close range. Honestly, you're gonna have a blast with this build. Don't forget to subscribe for more weekly content. I also have a Discord setup for anyone looking for more people to play with. The link to that and other Elden Ring related videos will be in the description down below. Alright guys, I'll go over the build starting off with the weapons and then the spells afterwards. So for the weapons, we have a total of three we can use to cover close range and long range attacks. And the first one being the Bolt of Grand Sacks. The scaling on it isn't anything crazy, but its base stats really make up for it, having 240 physical damage and 154 lightning damage at max level. Then it just increases more based on your dexterity stat, which is really nice. So I'm sitting at a flat 692 attack power without any buffs. With the buffs though, it reaches as high as 863, so this is going to be hitting pretty hard. But the main reason I went with this is because of its insane special attack that lets you throw a red lightning bolt at a ridiculous speed, range, and then doing some insane damage on top of that. It's basically the Elden Ring version of a 50 cal sniper. You destroy whatever you hit. And there's two ways of firing this, which is what I really like. You can tap the special attack button to do a decently fast lightning throw, but it has reduced range and damage for better casting speed. Or you can hold it down to have a lot more range and damage, but it takes more time to charge up. And because it has the option to charge up, Godfrey's Icon is a really good talisman for this. It increases the damage of all charge attacks by 15%, so this attack just got even more punishing. Right now, we have long range attacks covered, so what about close range attacks? And for that, I got it covered with a second spear, the Clayman's Harpoon. It's the hardest hitting spear with a really low amount of weight on it. But if you want to use the absolute best of the best, you can use the Cross Naginata. That weighs a bit more, does the same damage, and also has a little bit of passive bleed buildup on it. I didn't want to use it because it's used so much in builds and everything. I want to use something different that's just as effective though. But back to the Clayman's Harpoon. The damage on it is really weird because it deals damage in three different forms. Physical, magic, and lightning. Well, the lightning is because I'm using the lightning affinity, but it's pretty cool having three types of damage on one weapon. And since this weapon also deals lightning damage, using the lightning scorpion charm would be a really good idea. It just increases all lightning attacks damage by an extra 12%. On top of this, we still have another way of making the spear even better, and that's with an Ash of War. The best one I found for this is Sword Dance, and its damage is crazy good. It's a two-part Ash of War with each part costing 5 mana. I should also mention it costs 5 mana because I'm using the Carrion Filgreed Crest that reduces the cost of special attacks by 25%, and that includes the Bolt of Grand Sack's Lightning Throw. Just because we're going to be using Ashes of War a lot, so it'll be nice to save some mana for more uses. So for the Ash of War Sword Dance, it can hit like an absolute truck, going as high as 3000 damage with both parts of the attack. And most of the time, when you land the first part, you can follow up with the second part really easily. When you're dual wielding these spears, I'd recommend having the Bolt of Grand Sacks in your left hand and the Claimant's Harpoon in your right. Cause when enemies get close, you're not going to use the Bolt of Grand Sacks special attack with how long it takes to charge up. So you'll want something that hits just as hard and faster in close range. That's where Sword Dance comes into play. And again, we're going to be using Ashes of War a lot, so it only makes sense to add in the Shard of Alexander, which increases all special attack damage by an extra 15%. And that's why these attacks are so monstrous. Alright, now we can get into the spells, or the incantations, but we're going to need a Sacred Seal to cast them. And for that, I'm going with the Gravel Stone Seal. It increases all Dragon Cult incantations damage by an extra 15%. So, you can probably see where I'm going with this. With the first spell, I'm going with Frozen Lightning Spear. Your character smashes a lightning bolt into the ground, leaving a trail of electricity in front of him, before a second attack of lightning comes striking down. This is more useful when you're fighting against larger groups of enemies because of its wide area of effect and pretty good damage. It's definitely something you'll want to have on you. For the second spell, this one's more of a wild card. It either does a crazy amount of damage, or it barely scratches them. It's much better to use against larger enemies because it's easier to land it on them. 
and the spell being Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike. Your character calls down a bunch of lightning strikes around him that are completely random. That's why it's a wild card. It's not guaranteed to hit, but if it does, you can get a lot of damage out of it. It's not crazy important, but it has its uses with large bosses. And the last spell is Golden Vow. It increases all damage output by 15% and also increases our damage negation by 10%. On top of this, it lasts for 80 seconds, so it's going to be really handy to use right before boss fights to get some extra damage and protection in. Speaking of extra damage, we still have the Flask of Wondrous Physic. And for that, I'm using the Lightning Tier and Dexterity Tier. The Lightning Tier increases all lightning damage by 20% for 3 minutes. And the Dexterity Tier increases our dex by 10 levels for 3 minutes as well, just for some extra damage. Using this and Golden Vow will make you hit like an absolute beast. And now we can go over the armor, but honestly it's nothing that special. I'm just using the Twins Helmet, Rotten Gravekeeper Cloak, Guardian Bracers, and Radon's Greaves. None of these offer any kind of buffs or passives or whatsoever. It's all simply just for cosmetics. I mean, it doesn't even look that great. I was just trying to go for like a God of Thunder look, but I was more focused on functionality. Alright guys, lastly, let's go over the stats required for this build. You'll need a minimum of 20 strength, 40 dex, 12 intelligence, and 34 faith to use all the weapons and spells in this build. I'm also going to put links in the description down below on all the gear I'm using if you want more information on it and where you can find it all for yourselves. That's everything for today's video. I'd like to also give a big thanks to the members of my channel for supporting me on my videos and the future ones to come. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.